All right, in this video, I want to talk about using box cutter and self cut to create a 2D HUD. So we'll go ahead and just delete the cube and with shift A, we'll just insert a plane. I'll press SX 1.5 in order to just scale it out just a little bit. And we'll press D and switch over to custom and we'll press C in order to make this shape the custom cutter. Uh, under our behavior panel, we want to make sure that parent shape isn't on in order to avoid any issues. And I've actually been experimenting lately with just making cuts in different corners and then bringing it all back. So we're just cutting in various areas and the cutter is literally the mesh itself that we are cutting. And we're just drawing rectangles and just experimenting with the various types of shapes we can get. Just um, trying to create just um, a bunch of interesting little squares and layouts. So we'll continue just drawing squares and so finally to top it off we will fill in the middle section with our most interesting iterations of shapes yet and finally for this one this one is everything for the prize so with spacebar we have now finished putting this so of course as you keep making cutters it will get sequentially slower and slower due to just the law of diminishing returns when it comes to using such a thing even in the 2d state the calculation can get quite intense so what we'll do is take in gone and just make a few cuts just to uh, trim areas off just a little thing I like to do and so with this shape I can just press G and move it around however due to the complexity of this mesh really isn't going to give me a lot of leniency here and really keeping this non-destructive is you know for the birds at this point because we're kind of experimenting here so the easiest way to deal with this is to visual geometry to mesh and we'll just select everything and choose to just separate by loose parts which will give us just a border where we can continue making cuts and modifications without uh, any issues occurring and so every time I make one of these I always am cursed to attempt to experiment and try to get a more interesting result than the previous attempts, even the uh, demonstration attempts. So the next thing is we're going to press shift A and add a text object. And instead of even messing with the default font, I'm going to go under the font and just load up a personal font that I have that I've become a fan of. And that is this one, uh, Microgramma. So I'm pretty sure I got this one from um, Creative something um, same place I get all my affinity stuff now but um, in any case there's also this site the font where you can get a lot of really cool technical fonts where I could have also possibly have gotten it there we'll just type in warning I love saying warning you know you got to warn people let them know there's danger in this area also if this mesh has a border I thought that was a border of uh, edge in between on this line but it's not I'm always on the lookout for Boolean errors so I can get in there and over explain why they occur. And so I'm just typing the most co uh, complicated words I could think of console, um, the number three, also very complicated. Um, I was just talking about earlier how I'm more into the number 11 now and I see that number 11 is a very hard surface number, but it's not as hard surface as seven. Seven is pretty crazy, but then again, five is pretty good. But, you know, if you really wanna talk about a number, you wanna talk about one, which is a pretty good number. And then of course, we'll um, put in 24, which is the biggest number, but we'll need to use the Q menu and adjust the spacing to just, uh, these are just kind of representing to just different levels. And we'll just make this one two, just a number two area. Off on the side, we'll go ahead and uh, just play with, play with the plane. And with this plane, what I'll do is just press Control R and just roll a couple of loop cuts. However, I wanna be in edge mode when I press Control R and roll a couple of loop cuts. So it selects the loop cuts and I can press Control B to bevel those edges and then delete the faces. And that will give me 
these paragraph blocks. When I was discussing the idea with Chip, he proposed that I should make paragraph blocks to simulate uh, future text. And so that was actually a pretty good idea. So here we are making paragraph blocks. And instead of drawing panel lines over and over, we'll pretend as if we have one life to live and we'll just duplicate this over and over. And this is actually just second nature to me, just duplicating things and making variants. And then of course we can come back at the end and do some trimming to make this look more like a paragraph block. But I've just been experimenting with these and they're real fun to see pop in and out as well. So now that we have these paragraph blocks in, we could just go into box and just box things off. Just cut off random things just as we need them. And we'll press G to move this. In the event we need to move this, we can always tap to just drop it. And then spacebar to apply. And voila. So with this, I could just press Shift D, duplicate it, press uh, Control A to convert the geometry to mesh. And we can start peppering our UI in here with these items as well. And these are just good to let it be known, hey, there's more, more to say than just warning. Got some info for you too. And they look a little uh, fat, so we'll just adjust the scale, give them some spacing, and just place them in here. And it looks like we could be add, adding a few more elements. So one of the things I also like to add is a pie. So we can just scale this all in, just press M, merge it at center. And we'll just select these pieces, press YY if you're using Mesh Machine. And we'll just grab some sections of this and just break them off and just scale them to make a broken pie. And we'll just place them in. In fact, we can select this and even put a ring around it like so. And just, you know, if you're in vert mode, not, um, face mode, we can just grab some sides, maybe grab these, E, X, scale these in, S, X, and just place them wherever it's needed. Looking at the clock, it appears that we might be nearing deadline, so I'll uh, begin progressing to the next phases. So we'll duplicate this a couple of more times. You know, it's gonna be uh, popping in and out so fast that it won't be the, uh, the focal point of things. Just wanted to, just create a couple of circular elements. Another thing I wanted to create that probably is gonna be a little regrettable is let's uh, actually duplicate this. We'll scale it up and I'll put a couple levels of subdivision on it because it's a bigger item. And we'll shift A, just add a plane and I'll press S, Y. And what we wanna do is actually radial array this around the 3D cursor. But in my case, I didn't apply to scale and so it didn't come out the way it was supposed to. But now we actually have uh, little ticks happening on the outside of our HUD. And then of course we can go in and modify them if needed to get a more specific result. However, now that they've been added, I will go in and use NGON, non-cyclic NGON, to just cut out the points that are not gonna be needed for the purposes of this. So anything past those points won't be needed. In fact, we can go back in radial array, adjust our ticks to get them exactly where we need it, go in edit mode and maybe duplicate to get some ticks on the inside if desired. We could even mod scroll to bring back the cutter if we need to increase this um, mask. In fact, if this was a bigger cutter, that edge would be easier to select, but that's probably the one time AccuCut is um, more of a hindrance than it is a help, but I do love me some AccuCut. So with that, now we have our little ticks and we can actually do the same thing with this box as well and just cut off part of the circle. And it appears that we didn't get it all. So why is that? Well, I can tell you it's because of the modifier order. If we put the um, mirror above, or yeah, put the mirror above the boolean, then it makes more sense. And in fact, the more I look at this, the more I see that
that things could be done better. We'll just merge those at center. Make that a triangular formation. Still isn't gonna work. We'll bring it inside. Maybe change it into something like that. And, you know, almost insta regret, except we could duplicate this, mod scroll it till we get a combination we like, and then scroll it through the rest of the combinations until we, we can scroll through the rest of the mods until we get a result that's actually good. So we can select this inner ring and just scale that inward to get something just a little more happening. And then finally, to really frame this thing, we'll put a plane in the center and just place some edges. And actually, before I do that, let's inset it, which will get us something like that as a border. I forgot to apply to scale again. But by beveling these inner edges, we can get a real nice boundary loop. And we're just gonna select these ticks on the corner, two clicks every time, too many. And we'll just separate the selection, delete everything else, and this is our HUD. So a little bit of a process to get here. However, it also appears we lost a man, so we'll just mirror to the other side and pretend that never happened. So the next thing is, you know, let's get rid of this light so it's not the thing that centers us. And maybe we also want to help this thing out. Actually, I don't know. We probably don't need to put any outside of the notification system. In fact, looking at this, I, I see that we also could probably use some bars and graphs in here as well. I mean, I, I just can't resist the urge to get in here and do some random cutting to each of these pieces to just give them a little more visual interest on what they are. Um, because to me, they almost look like they represent different laboratories. So we could be putting all sorts of symbols and things in here as well. But instead what we'll do is just select everything and because box cutter has a uh, thing where if snapping's on when you hold control it will deselect your object so i'm just going to turn snapping off so i can just press control a and turn everything into a mesh and from here now that everything's a mesh we can just join it all together or actually let's not join it all together let's let's slap everything with blank materials so we grab the text blank material. We grab the boxes and we allow these to also get their own blank material. In fact, I'm not going to waste. In fact, shift S origin to geometry. And now let's try to select that even faster. Every object is like guess the origin. So lesson learned but I got confidence that we can get this. So we just give it a bigger hotspot circle. We really just click these things in the heart of their origins where we think they um, are born from. So now we can just press Alt M, blank material on these. And we'll have to wait a moment because we have, I guess 189 objects selected. I always gotta look at my object selected count whenever I'm doing things because, you know, usually I never think about it, but some of these things that we're, we attempt to automate are pretty click heavy in, their, in the amount of strokes that uh, we seek to save. In fact, just this one is like 24 clicks by itself. Um, you can just give it a try if you have any doubts. So we'll select these, all the rings, and we'll slap them with a blank material as well. Keep in mind that all these materials are just placeholders. In fact, let's try it again. Blank material. All right. So let's see, what else is there left? It's just these little, little houses in here. And I wonder if we can select them by color. Shift G. You know, Shift G should have something for like selecting by material type and things like that. But, um, you know, selecting things by material is just one of those things you just can't do in vanilla Blender. It's kind of weird. Um, I wonder how we'll uh, get around that. We can just, let's see what material does it have. It has no material. 
and we have to select everything that has zero materials. So let's actually take this moment to bring in batch operations, which in my case is actually already enabled. So let's see if batch operations can actually help us in this or if this video is going to be going down in flames because I didn't fully rehearse the steps that I was going to need to practice on this. And I don't know if batch operations is going to be able to select. Let's see, when I select, I want this to be collections object. So that means that whenever I click this, it should select it. So now I'm able to select things by their materials. So I'll be able to select something, hide it, select something, hide it, select something, hide it. And through this process of elimination, I can uh, quickly get to where I'm trying to get to with this particular situation. But sometimes you'll um, run into a problem in which there's no just no built-in blender way to resolve it in which case you know blank material has your back or um, batch operations has your back so just a nice little shout out to them um, I don't always get to segue them into my content but they're always there for me whenever I need them um, especially when it comes to dealing with all this um, selection business so now we have our Okay, uh, for a minute I was like, what's going on here? It's actually my custom cutters are on the same collection as well. So this is a good opportunity to talk about eviction, where if we press control on Unity Evict, it will evict all the custom cutters that are improperly placed due to uh, a, a certain glitch with cutters that I need to talk about sometime in the correct collection. So now to begin working towards a conclusion, we can actually just put a plane over here on the side and just go into Ngon without cyclic on and just cut some interesting patterns similar to my last tutorial um, talking about cyclic where we were making some rigid body simulation things. And that one was a gamble. That one is also a gamble. And I'm always pressing spacebar, but you can also double left click on the final point in order to complete your operation. And that's actually more cuts than I even need. So we'll go back to custom, C, mark this as custom cutter. And on this side, we will just turn this into a slice, maybe go full destructive. And we can just start slicing things up. And you can see off on the side that my cutter that was marked got re-revealed. That wouldn't happen if I would have actually marked it as a wire first. Um, one of our goals with this box cutter release is to expand on the custom cutter capabilities. And once you see what I'm talking about with the uh, video on that, you'll um, definitely be a little more excited about it, but it definitely means that um, we, we removed all the filters that limit you on what custom cutters you're able to use, which seem to be a little problematic. We'll go ahead and just remove that. And let's bring everything back and we'll just select everything and just evict again just to make sure i like to uh, re-evict but because of the problem that i saw in box cutter on the horizon that's why there's a solution on the hop side so now we have our hud created and everything's a little piece but it's not enough little pieces let's tap into edit mode select all and let's separate by loose parts now we can select everything and origin to geometry and now there's a million ways for this, this uh, contraption to fall apart. So if we go into our end panel, we can go under commotion and I'm gonna move everything visible to a collection called AFF. But I'm also gonna create an empty and we're gonna move it to a collection called EFF. So AFF is short for effectors and EFF is short for effected. So really effectors affected, but uh, you know, that's just how it came across to me um, in my head. So apologize for any confusion there. And we'll just 
turn on proximity effector and set these to zero. And I'm just playing with these parameters. Uh, once you see what's going on when you begin playing with these collection controls, you'll you'll be able to go in and actually perfect this to your heart's content. But this is basically the end of the uh, tutorial. Now you can see the final result. But the thing is, is that I built this with all these placeholder materials. So let's talk about actually getting a, a actual result, which this whole metal look could actually work. But I did want to use this video to segue and talk about uh, shift about material scroll. Uh, material scroll has been updated for this version and now material scroll is its own man, a little different than a uh, blank material scroll. But if we shift click it, we can go into destructive material scroll. So in order to really see this, I'm gonna press T twice to jump this type to emission. But as we scroll through different types of emissive types, we can, we can actually change all of these objects sharing the same material at the same time. So I chose a frame where there's light, so now you can see that it's green. And we'll make the secondary color of all of them red, and I'll just copy and paste them as we move along. So I'll select another piece, and we'll just shift click. And before I scroll, I'll press TT. And we'll just kind of see what colors we get. I actually like that yellow. We'll select another one, and we'll shift scroll TT, and scroll until we find a color we like. Maybe one that kind of goes along with the uh, same scheme that we already have going here. Maybe a little too close. So we can select this 11 and shift scroll TT and just scroll till we find the right example. And the same thing with just every part that's left, just selecting it, jumping into emissive material scroll by pressing TT after jumping into destructive material scroll, you can begin scrolling through just random material combinations. And I'm just looking at the colors in the viewport and just thinking, you know, does this, is this one gonna go good with my setup or uh, is it gonna be something that clashes? So, and every little piece is, is special on this thing. So that's probably the best part of all. In fact, we could press Alt V, I was gonna say Alt V and we could just turn on bloom and now we can look at our object with the bloom instead of adding a viewport to it. If we come out of um, overlays off mode, we can now see kind of what we're getting with our HUD. And so if we move our empty around, you can see that we're basically getting this HUD that's just disintegrating. And everything's actually kind of color coordinated right now, which is a little different than my previous example. So on this side of things, we can actually go for a entirely different combination of colors and you know, I always just like to experiment so you know earlier I was really into a yellow so let's select that and we can just start giving things just the colors that we want them to uh, transition into instead of something so random So there we go. So now we have that, 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 the worst color combinations, one that's a little, that's a little bit more to my liking. And so we're just kind of just playing with our HUD, just moving the empty, just watching everything move. And it looks pretty interesting, but I do want to talk about some of the settings like fade and fall off. In fact, fall off is actually pretty cool. I enjoy playing with the fall off and the fade amounts. And also location, you know, right now there's no location happening, but we could say put something in here like I don't know, 30. And so now as we move it, it actually begins adjusting the locations of things, which I found to be really cool, but I didn't want it actually firing outside of my uh, sci-fi constraint that I had set up for it. So if we have it go up to like, I don't know, 0.1, then it actually looks a little bit better, at least in terms of being inside of a HUD. Um, and keep in mind, this, this is just a test, just a test experiment. So uh, we're just kind of freestyling here. In fact, we look at this, we can see that the pieces are rotating up, which maybe we don't want. Maybe we actually want this to rotate on this one, on the 90. And if we look at this, we can see that that one's actually not the axis we want either. We actually want the Z, and we probably want it to rotate at least 180. So when things come in, they just kind of flip into place. 
which to me just looks really interesting. You know, we could even play with the scale a little bit. Like right now, we're just talking about just, um, you know, random uh, or numbers that I like in particular. But you can get some really interesting results just playing with random numbers. Like we just put a 20 scale in there and that was a pretty interesting result. So when it comes to actually getting the final result, let's talk about that. So at the very beginning of our time frame, or we can actually start our empty where it's non-impacted so it just looks normal and just press I, set our keyframe. We can actually turn on frame recording for this to just make things easier. And we could let it stay normal till frame about 40. And then between this and frame 112, we want to begin exiting the scene. Something like that. And then we just come back. We'll actually let that hold for a few seconds. And the keyframe that I had over here for the first frame, we'll just shift D duplicate it. So that way it just transitions back, but we'll offset it. So that way it reveals it just, just right. And then we can just let it sit and then loop. So if we let this play out in action, we can see the empty rolls out of frame, which causes the UI to disappear. And then it comes back and it just sits there flashing through the two iterations and then starting over once again. So that is the um, kind of UI creation process using using 2D and box cutter, just getting in there, having a little fun. Of course, to end this, we can turn this into something that's actually proper, so, um, or just presentable. So I will just choose bake. And so right now it's actually playing through the timeline, baking the proximity effector to the meshes themselves, which means that now I'm able to go in and adjust this to my heart's content and make this exactly what I need it to be. So we're just letting this run through the timeline. Usually it only just takes a moment, depending on the length of your timeline, of course. And now it's over. So we'll come out of rendered mode and just see what we got as far as our AFF goes. And we can just control G to make this a group. And we're just gonna call this HUD I created a file earlier called HUD1, just in case I want to use all these HUDs together to really let people know the warning. So I'm just going to create a new collection, and we'll just call this SCN for scene. Delete the extra character, and we'll just shift A at a collection instance of HUD2, turn off proximity effector, and if we just let this play through, this is basically the animation result that we have. And it's something that we can just use in our viewport. So because of that, let me undo those keyframes and turn this off. But let's bring in a plane and just scale it up. And this is the laziest sci-fi interface device you've ever seen. I'm just warning you now. We'll press 2, hit it with the solidify. I'm going to grab one corner and control click on mark in order to bevel the verts. Go back into object mode and actually apply to scale. So that way we're able to see what we're getting on the bevel. And then I'll mirror it to both sides, which will get us something like this. However, I think I accidentally created, oh wait, no, I didn't. So we want to press uh, X to reset to default and we'll mirror that to the other side because we do not want multiple modifiers. And let's actually scroll this through material combination until we find something that's good for a um, HUD holder. So maybe something like that going on is going to work. And we can actually turn snapping back on because we do want to jump off the centerpiece. Maybe not with custom. Sorry about that. We want to jump off with box. My favorite shape of all. And let's just cut through this. And let's look at this. So we want it to actually fit around. So I'm just holding alt while I drag this dot in order to keep it uniform. And we'll get it about there, press B, bevel it just right. And maybe at this last second, I decided I don't want it to be uh, a cutout, I want it to be a slice. So let's slice it out. And this shape looks terrible. So let's alt click sharpen to put a weight at normal on it. 
Let's also put away a normal on that one. And as far as blank material goes, shift clicking it to add a glass is one of my favorite things to do with blank material, which basically gives us the uh, foundations of a little sci-fi inter interface panel. So I was actually creating the same thing earlier, in case you're wondering why I'm getting such a nice result. I always like to rehearse my tutorials for you guys. So we can just scale this in. And if we take a look at this, this is now our final result. So it's just a sci-fi interface that just shows up warning, warning, warning. All these levels are orange and blue and orange and blue. So just an experiment to, uh, you know, show you guys to get started with. Of course, I'll have the link to Commotion in the description. It's one of my favorite tools. I recommend everybody just give it a shot. It's just so easy and fun to get into. In a way, you could uh, say this like the opposite of our tools. However, his tool also just focuses on the motion graphics side of things. So definitely a lord at keeping things simple. In fact, let's mirror this over to the other side and let's mirror this over to the other side. Let's try that again. Mirror to the other side and let's mirror. Actually, let's press A and make it a new mirror and definitely mirror to the other side. Sometimes when the mirror is being crazy with your existing modifier, it's easy to just add a new one because it will definitely do what you need. And I mean, I still plan on doing a video talking about mirror more in depth in the future. Right there, we see a cut didn't actually go through. I'm curious to why. Let's try that again. Well, there it is going through. And so, you know, just because I can't stop, won't stop. We'll um, grab this area, put a little circle there. And it looks like the bevel is just not catching. So let's, in fact, it looks like the boolean isn't catching either. So let's try that again. I do not know what's, okay. I think it's because I'm in destructive mode and this is a uh, non-destructive creation. So therefore it's not going to destructively cut into a mesh that is a solidified plane that technically does not exist. So that's something to just keep in mind if you're using hops that, you know, when working non-destructive and destructive at the same time, you definitely cannot do it on a shape that is not destructively capable. So here we are, we're looking at our final result. We can actually press Q uh, in the hard ops menu with nothing selected and just add a camera. And let's bring in this camera. We want to really look at this slow. I've been setting my timelines to take about 6,000 frames just to be more fun. We'll put a giant plane in here and put it directly below just to really end this on a key shot fill. Just scroll through material floors until we find just the right floor and then find the right environment to really convey across what we're going for with our HUD. And then if you really want to top it off, let's go under blank light where we can really just scroll through some combinations until we're lighting up our HUD exactly as we want it to be seen. So even though in the render, while it's, pro while it's um, showing in real time, you can see it getting a little jaggy on the shadows. The intended result of getting in here and showing a HUD, mission accomplished. So with that, I can wrap up this video and I'll see you guys next time. At the end of this video, I don't feel like the illumination is coming all the way through enough to get like a generous amount of bloom. So we could actually remedy that by going to the uh, collection that has all of these parts and we can just raise the emit multiplier to something like 16. And let's actually uh, change that to 26. So we'll just copy that and paste that into every field. So we're just selecting each object. Maybe even give this one a proper, proper color that goes along with the rest of things. Maybe a pink. 
uh, old habits die hard. We'll select this thing, 26, 26, 26. This color is so drab. Um, we want to make sure that it gets a good 26. In fact, let's pump that color up to be something a little hotter. This color never even got a material. So we'll jump in and just scroll through some possible combinations for it. I'm just looking at the color on the side and we'll just change that to be maybe something blue and we'll give that some additional pop as well. In fact, we're just going in here, just making sure everything has a good amount so that whenever we look at it on this side in its presentation, it looks fine. So that is the intended result or at least a um, better result. In fact, I wonder if we could do something about these shadows. I could simplify the heck out of these shadows and that would that would get us a, a good result. In fact, something like that I could actually show in real time. But anyways, you guys get the idea. In fact, the glass in the middle is also a curiosity to me. And this is something I've been noticing in the later versions of Blender is that glass will look like this. And it's so weird. Like it looks like there's like an edge in the middle. So to remedy that, what I'll do is just do visual geometry to mesh and then go in edit mode and just dissolve any edge loops. I mean, it sounds ridiculous, but for some reason edge loops just register oddly. And if we didn't save this as, um, as, U, as UI thing, Saving, saving files brought to you by PowerSafe. But anyways, now we can go back to the beginning and take a look at what we have with a nice render. So let me get my recording of that. And we'll just let that go through. And that's actually not bad at all. That will do. That will do for today. So I just wanted to do a couple of corrections before I got out of here. Sorry about that, you guys.